Okay, today I want to teach you guys about what we call the free trade diagram. Um, you see it on the board here, and you see it's essentially the exact same as the supply and demand. I mean, it is supply and demand. We're not finished yet, so, you know, keep on listening. Um, a few things that are of note here. First of all, we do need to identify a specific market. So we're talking about South African TVs. Now we're talking about the South African market for TVs. So these suppliers are South African producers of televisions. So we typically want to call this not just supply, but supply domestic. So usually we write D-O-M for domestic. Alternatively, sometimes I like to just write supply South Africa, S-A, whatever. The point is that you're making sure you understand that these are producers of TVs, suppliers of TVs, in the market you're looking at, in this case, South Africa. Likewise, these demanders are South African demanders of TVs. It doesn't really matter about if somebody in Zimbabwe wants to come down and buy a TV in South Africa. If so, they're part of the South African demand for TVs, the South African market. So, these two lines are people who live inside or consume and produce inside of South Africa, inside of the market that you're looking at. However, since it's international trade, it's not these two things that are the only concern. What we have to think about is supply coming from outside of the market that we're looking at. Again, demand from outside of the market doesn't matter if that demand happens inside of the market that we're talking about. If there were demand somewhere else, for example, if, um, oh, I don't know, if uh, Mozambique wanted uh, South Africa to ship TVs to it, that would be a different discussion. So right now we're just looking at demand inside of the country that we're studying. Okay, we have to make an assumption here. And the assumption is an assumption about infinity. And what we have to think is, if we look at all the producers of TVs in the world, so South Korea, Japan, um, the United States to an extent, if we look at all those producers of TVs, can they produce more than what, what demand there is in South Africa? That's where this A variable becomes a little bit important if we look at you know, where the demand curve intersects uh, the quantity axis. This is saying, well, there's only, you know, 30 million South Africans or 50 million South Africans or, you know, however many. That means there's a limited demand for TVs. Certainly not that number. Certainly not 50 million. Certainly not at this kind of price. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say, we put it in Rand um, and we put a price that's probably higher than what you would actually pay. You'll see the reason for that in a second. So, you know, most TVs in South Africa, you know, just a normal size TV is going to be about maybe 4,000 Rand, so, so that's a little important. So the point is, like, how many people could actually be on this demand curve? It's not a limitless number. But if we look at South Korea, if we look at Japan, they can certainly supply more TVs than whatever this number is. So in a way, that's infinite. The reason that's important is we're going to look at the world supply as being an infinite supply of TVs at whatever price we put, not this price. So, assuming the world can supply limitless TVs at, say, 4,000 Rand, what that means is at 4,000 Rand here, the world can supply basically a perfectly elastic amount of those. So we're going to draw this and call it S world. Some people will call this a specific country. If we're looking specifically at trade between South Africa and South Korea, we would just call it S South Korea. We're not being as specific here, so it doesn't really matter. Again, what this curve is saying though, is that South African demand for world TVs is gonna have zero effect on the demand curve, or I'm sorry, on the supply curve, okay? So this price coming from the world, it's, it's a set price. If I'm South Korea, I'm gonna sell you my TVs at 4,000 or I'm gonna sell Botswana TVs at 4,000. I don't care who buys my TVs, that's the price I'm gonna sell it for. When you look at how this goes now, so we've got two supply curves, supply world and supply South Africa, it's important to look at how they interact with each other. 
So for a while, for the first bit, we see that South Africa can actually supply TVs at a lower cost. So these South African suppliers could sell at this same price, 4,000, and still have producer surplus right in here, which means they're going to, they're gonna make those TVs. So this quantity right here, we're gonna call it Q domestic. And what that means is that that quantity is going to be supplied by the domestic suppliers. Okay, well now let's keep looking at the South African supply curve. Once we go past this quantity, Q domestic, now we see that the South African supply curve is higher up than the world supply curve, which means these suppliers from here up, they can't supply the TVs as efficiently as the world supplier can. So from this point forward, the supply is going to be produced by the world. Now, of course, that's only gonna to go to a certain amount, and that's gonna be where it intersects the demand curve. So once we get to this price of 4,000 Rand at this quantity, and this quantity here is gonna be Q star, this is gonna be our equilibrium quantity at the world price, okay? Now look, if I bring back this curve, you saw me tear on this intersection right here, I took it away for a second. If I bring this back, we can see a couple of important outcomes. First of all, we can see that South Africans are getting more TVs than they were without, world, uh, without international trade. We can also see that the price of TVs in South Africa has fallen. So both of those outcomes, if we assume that having more TVs is a good thing and lower prices are a good thing, both this outcome and that outcome are going to be positive outcomes for South Africa. Likewise, we can see if we were to look at uh, consumer surplus, we can see that without world trade, so if we were just looking at the black, consumer surplus would have been this triangle here. With world trade, we can see again that their consumer surplus has expanded all the way down to include this much larger triangle. So again, that's just more evidence from the diagram of how this is good for South African consumers. South African producers might not like it as much, but that's a deep, uh, different discussion about efficiency and, and who's good at what.